that's like a stupid pump. Let's say you train your biceps, you do a couple sets, and then your biceps are so pumped that you can't feel your biceps anymore, and that you're literally walking around like this, and you can't straighten your arm anymore, so everything is partial reps, because your bicep is so inflamed. That's how powerful pre-workout the Anabol or Anadrol really is. Vigorous Steve here with the Vigorous Q&A for all of your bodybuilding related questions. Today's question is from Zach Drain. Which do you prefer for pre-workout pump, Cialis or Viagra? And at what dose? I mean, why not both, buddy? Also, can either be stacked with L-citrulline and other pump enhancers. Thanks for all of the great information. Well, Zach, you can open up a can of whoop-ass or worms or Pandora's box because I'm very familiar with pump products, both over-the-counter supplements and performance-enhancing drugs that initiate a phenomenal pump. So let's get started. But before we do, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell button while you're at it so you can get notified whenever a new Vigorous Q&A video drops. Cialis versus Viagra. Well, it kind of depends on your preference. Do you like to have a pump that is longer lasting? Or you do, do you like to have a pump that's a little bit more obscene, but also gives you a stuffy nose? Personally, I prefer Cialis because it doesn't give me a stuffy nose, no longer gives me flushing, even though when I first introduced the Cialis a couple of years ago at five milligrams per day with continuous use, daily use, I started getting a little bit of flushing and this heat radiating from my face, which is very similar to when you stick your head into the oven to get your pizza rolls or whatever else you put in the oven out. So that flushing sensation, that feeling that you're radiating heat from your face, that is going to be there with all PDE5 inhibitors, whether that's Cialis, Levitra, or Viagra. And that's going to be there for a couple of weeks with continuous use. But if you use Cialis, Viagra, or Levitra infrequently, it seems that you don't really get used to the flush, and the flush will always be there if you use it pre-workout, maybe once or twice per week. And whether that's 5 to 10 milligrams of Cialis, or 25 to 50 milligrams of Viagra, or maybe 50 milligrams of Levitra, the flush will always be there unless you're using an angiotensin receptor blocker, which can also give you flushing in the beginning when you start using that. So that's why I always recommend people to start their telmisartan at 20 milligrams and then build their way up and exclude the PDA5 inhibitors just to make sure that there's no overlap and a severe reduction in blood pressure. So let's say you're running telmisartan 20 milligrams per day, you're getting some flushing out of that but that diminishes over time because you're exposing yourself to that on a daily basis, you will be able to increase that to 40 milligrams. Maybe you're not even getting any flushing from that point onwards, after which you should be able to safely reintroduce Cialis, Viagra, or Levitra without experiencing any further flushing. So keep that in mind, you have to slowly build that up to prevent the flushing from occurring. What I do notice is that even with 25 to 50 milligrams of Viagra pre-workout once or twice per week in combination with a angiotensin receptor blocker, that the flushing is not there, but the stuffy nose still persists. And that's why I don't really like Viagra or Levitra, because even at 25 milligrams pre-workout, I get a horribly stuffy nose. And when you do sets to failure or beyond, and your blood pressure goes up. And even though you're combining medications to control your blood pressure, your blood pressure might still go up during those strenuous last few sets. When you have a stuffy nose on Viagra or Levitra, this blood pressure in your skull gets worse. And this has always prevented me to train at the maximal training capacity because I no longer know where to focus. Do I need to focus on my quads, pushing past failure on the squat or the leg press or the hack squat? Or do I need to reduce the intensity a little bit to take the pressure off my skull away? So this is the reason why I never liked Viagra or Levitra and always prefer to take five to 10 milligrams Cialis before the workout because the pumps, even though they're slightly less compared to Viagra or Levitra, and I don't get this brain splitting tension headache, which would persist for hours if I train anywhere close to failure. So with Cialis, I don't experience that very minimal side effects besides the flushing, which happens initially, after which, once you get used to it, five to 10 milligrams Cialis about an hour pre-workout, phenomenal pumps, not as phenomenal as Viagra, but again, no side effects, no tension headaches, no stuffy face or feeling of any of the sorts, 
preventing me to train at maximum training capacity. Now regarding the over-the-counter supplements, citrulline malate, beta-alanine, betaine anhydrous, glycerol, creatine monohydrate, sodium nitrite, vasodrive AP or nitrocygene. There's so many pump products out there, most of which you can find in Gorilla Mode or Gorilla Mode Nitric. My favorite pre-workout to take for overall pumps without too much stimulation. So those you can all find in a Gorilla Mode products or you go with Gorilla Mode en Energy if you prefer to have more of a stimulatory effect. Regarding pump products, there are many of them out there, most of which can be found in the more popular over-the-counter supplement pre-workout formulations. So let's say you go with two scoops, Gorilla Mode Nitric. That's a lot of pump products and also a lot of potential to reduce your blood pressure if you're combining this with Cialis and an angiotensin receptor blocker. So let's say you do all of the pump products together, you have to keep in mind that due to this increase in the pump, your blood pressure might also go down because many of these compounds act as vasodilators. Now, while that's good for the pump, by increasing the delivery into skeletal muscle and retaining the nutrients and the sodium and the electrolytes and all of that good stuff there for a phenomenal pump, this also means that your blood volume might go down when you're combining all of that together. An easy way to mitigate that and to further enhance the pump is just to increase your sodium intake around the workout. Now, two scoops of Gorilla Mode Nitric already has around 400 milligrams of actual sodium, that's sodium, not sodium chloride. Then you can safely increase that to about a thousand milligrams sodium by adding one gram of salt, which is sodium chloride in combination. So this way, as you get about a gram of sodium, which should sustain your blood volume, prevent your blood pressure from going down too far. If you're adding the Cialis and the Telmasart and whatever else on top of two scoops of Gorilla Mode Nitric, but the sodium will also increase nutrient delivery and enhance the pump further. Same as with glycerol. Two scoops of Gorilla Mode Nitric has only 4,000 milligrams of glycerol, but I prefer to add another 5,000, maybe even 10,000 milligrams of glycerol on top which really, really, really enhances the pump further. Glycerol pulls a substantial amount of water into the skeletal muscle and with sodium and proper hydration, and of course Cialis and Telmasartan contributing to this to a certain extent, that's already a crazy pump. Now this is basically an over-the-counter supplement stack to improve your pump and get the most phenomenal workouts. But of course, there's plenty of performance enhancing drugs to choose from to take your pump and your workout to the next level. Pre-workout oral steroids, for example. Now, there's several different kinds. Of course, we're still covering that in the Worth It or Not video series. Long story short, I would either choose between Dianabol or Anadrol, both of which seems to give the best pumps. If you're taking that in the pre-workout setting and administer that sublingually to prevent the first pass metabolism within the liver. So you take your 30, 40, 50 milligrams of the anabol, it's completely up to you, 25 to 50 milligrams anadrol separately, sublingually, this will enhance the pump significantly. My preference would go out for anadrol, 25 to 50 milligrams, 100 milligrams if you do so desire, because anadrol seems to work very, very well sublingually if you combine that with sodium, a decent amount of glycerol and the other pump products which we discussed. Again, anadrol might increase your blood pressure acutely, which will mitigate the blood pressure reduction, which we'll get from the Cialis, perhaps an ARB, and some of the other pump products which are contained in the over-the-counter supplements. So this is a nice balancing act, assuming that your sodium is in place, leading to a phenomenal pump, great contractions, of course, a pump that is longer lasting because anadrol does have a longer half-life. So even though your workout might have finished and your glycogen stores have depleted, the pump will still remain. Also because Cialis has a very long half-life. And it's not to say that Turinabol or Anivar or Winstrol or Superdrol or Halotestin are poor pre-workout oral steroids. Regarding the pump, they will certainly yield a decent pump, but they mostly improve the contractile capacity and the strength. There's nothing like pre-workout Dianabol or Anadrol if you're solely going for the pump. That's like a stupid pump. Let's say you train your biceps, you do a couple sets, 
and then your biceps are so pumped that you can't feel your biceps anymore and that you're literally walking around like this and you can't straighten your arm anymore so everything is partial reps because your bicep is so inflamed that's how powerful pre-workout the anabol or anadrol really is so those i would consider as an oral steroid and then there's of course all kinds of water-based injectables which you can take pre-workout to further enhance your pump testosterone suspension trenbolone suspension insulin more than later injectable carnosine injectable atp i mean amino asylum has got all kinds of pre-workout injectables which are highly beneficial if you want to get a phenomenal pump really there's so many products you can inject to improve your pump further now of course trimbolone or testosterone suspension is also going to give you a decent amount of post-injection pain and inflammation which makes the pump longer lasting but it's not exactly the pump which would improve recovery afterwards it's mostly metabolic waste products and inflammation which occurs in the muscle of course injecting or pinning the specific muscle that you're going to train repeatedly will result into scar tissue so keep that in mind there's some practical application beside, behind carnosine to help with the pump and the same with atp through its injectable form i mean the pump that you get from injectable atp is nothing short of legendary and borderline insane especially in combination with anadrol and some of the other over-the-counter pump products injectable atp is a win but there's also oral atp available you have peak atp recently came to market the muscle tech has a 400 milligram single ingredient product i'm running that right now to see much how it compares to injectable atp and if it has efficacy in a pre-workout setting for now i can say that it improves my endurance slightly but that's also besides the ubiquinol and everything else that i'm taking to improve my heart function and improve my endurance while i'm training there's also elef atp which is an ancient peat apple extract personally i haven't tried it myself i can't find an over-the-counter supplement that only contains elef atp so i can give that a fair comparison to peak atp and injectable atp so for now i would say that it might have some efficacy but i haven't tried it personally so injectable atp surely increases the pump but from my experience the peak atp doesn't it only increases endurance which again is a warm welcome when you're trying to train insane you can look into insulin again in combination with carbohydrates and a decent amount of electrolytes to continuously shuttle nutrients into the skeletal muscle while you're continuously and simultaneously burning through your glycogen stores so you're constantly topping that up with an intra-workout carbohydrate in a form of glucose or dextrose or high branch cyclic dextrins perhaps in combination with essential amino acids and yes gorilla mind has all of those available for sale i'll link all of them down below in the description section so let's say you do a inter-workout formula with insulin to continuously top off whatever you're burning through during the workouts this will sustain the pump and increase the pump like none other so to make a long story short perhaps you like to go with the gorilla mode or gorilla mode nitric one or two scoops depending on your preference add a little bit of sodium consider five to ten milligrams of cialis consider a pre-workout oral steroids and whether that's the anabol or anadrol once twice maybe three times per week to minimize the side effects it's entirely up to you again pre-workout insulin with an intra workout in place to sustain your glucose levels during, throughout the workout preventing you from going hypoglycemic and preventing you from losing the pump at any point in time i think at this point your pump is so substantial that you're already unable to finish the workout or feel your muscle contracting properly this is actually a major downside and ultimately the downfall of combining so many pre-workout pump products the pump is so crazy that you can't contract your muscles properly you just don't feel them all you feel is pump and you're literally walking around like this because everything is inflated full with carbohydrates and electrolytes and all kinds of metabolic waste products so keep that in mind you don't want to overdo it reducing your overall ability to actually contract that muscle which is still important for hypertrophy signaling i'll leave it up to you which combination you're going for i really hope this was helpful guys again injectable atp in my opinion is where it's at but it's certainly not for everybody and please don't overdo it because the vasodilation is so substantial that you'll be heaving like 
I don't know, even know what the good analogy is. You'll just be heaving and sucking in air because the vasodilation is so severe that you're gasping for air for maybe a minute or two. And if you think that trend cough is bad, the heaving that you get from injectable ATP, 10 times worse. So please proceed with caution and don't overdo it. Maybe you start with peak ATP in a tablet form or LF ATP in a tablet form and then build your way up. I'll leave it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find everything that I'm associated with down below in the description section. Have a look at some of my sponsors and affiliates. Use their discount codes so you can save yourself some money while shopping online. Head over to vigorsteve.com. Check out the article section. I have more affiliates and sponsors there. If you're looking for over-the-counter supplement XYZ, supplements that I discussed in this YouTube channel, check out that article, the Control F source list. There's so many links and discount codes waiting for you to use them to save yourself some money on anything that I discuss in these videos. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. A frontable bicep for you guys. Man, I would love to have some injectable ATP, but I think it's on the way. I'll leave it there. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.